I want to talk about an idea and an experiment. And I want to talk about how it relates and what it means for people here tonight. We're going to do that by going back to the early 2000s, when Canada had one of the highest rates of youth incarceration in the world. And not only that, but we were finding that a lot of the time, youth who were getting involved with the system, even if it was for minor offenses, were having a really hard time reintegrating into the community afterwards. Victims of crime were feeling like they were left out of the process, and, and it was becoming clear that something had to change. Now, one of the uh, ideas that was introduced to help with the situation was to allow ordinary citizens to literally take the law into their own hands, which sounds kind of like the beginning of like a, an action movie or uh, like The Purge. Um, <laughs> it's not. Uh, and yet it's not completely unrelated because it, it defies one of the same uh, fundamental assumptions in Western civilization, going back millennia. The idea that law and order are matters of state best left to the professionals. Now in this case, the idea which would eventually become law was to allow uh, certain groups of citizens to be sanctioned by the courts to give official advice in, when they're sentencing uh, somebody, which is clever in that you, um, you get some advice from people on the ground who maybe have an idea of how someone might reintegrate or what have you, and yet if it's bad advice, well, the, the court keeps final say. One of the, the first groups to take full advantage of this was called the Youth Restorative Action Project, or YRAP. And they did it in a way that no one had yet imagined, because they had a limit, an age limit, 14, was it 14 to 24, 15 to 24, actually, um, which essentially made it the first youth-run youth justice committee in the world, because they wanted to be a voice by and for the community of youth. And it was founded by a, a fairly uh, diverse group of people, including a lot of youth who had their own experiences with the child welfare, criminal justice system, uh, as well as adult advisors and people in the legal community who saw value in the, the idea. They wanted to see it work. Now, um, these are people who, based on their own experiences, they knew that it takes more than punishment to hold somebody accountable. They knew that you can't even punish somebody who has nothing to lose. You can't reintegrate when you've never felt integrated to begin with. And that if you really want to take on crime rather than just you know, deal with a few crimes, you're going to have to acknowledge that there's a backdrop of poverty, of discrimination, of trauma, of mistrust, of, of damaged homes and broken systems. And to do all this, well, the people at YRAP, the people who were forming it, they didn't have a big budget. They didn't have the kind of budget that a, a big institution would. But they did have, oh, I, I guess I could say they didn't have the same burdens either. Uh, so they drew on some ideas from restorative justice, which is this uh, way of dealing with and thinking about crime that uh, it works very well on a small scale. They made these youth panels. They followed through with the ideas from the youth panels by having peer mentors who would follow through a process with the youth. And they did this knowing that it's a lot easier to relate to somebody who feels similar to you. And you're a lot more likely to follow through on a process or invest in a process that holds meaning to you. But more importantly, within this approach lay the assumption that even though we're talking about these, these big social issues that we usually leave to professionals, we're also talking about things that are made up of these smaller personal situations and issues that actually can be addressed by youth effectively, not in spite of who they are, but because of it. And uh, this was years ago that they were forming this. It was a really ambitious idea, kind of idealistic. A lot of those kind of ideas don't go anywhere. So the question is, what happened to the Youth Restorative Action Project? And I can say that, uh, to put it one way, if you were to have a, if a pregnant woman were to have walked into the very first YRAP meeting, say this could never possibly work, and walked right back out, as of this year, her child could be a full member of that program. And it didn't just survive because today, YRAP is routinely called in to deal with some of the most difficult situations that anyone has to deal with. And these could include things like uh, cases where there's really serious offenses. They could include um, cases where there's all sorts of complicating factors like gangs, drugs, mental health issues, all sorts of stuff. Or situations where uh, other interventions have been tried and nothing's worked. And in that time, over 500 of youth have gone through YRAP, have been referred through the program. And that's not counting the hundreds who've been involved in other ways. And it's so cost effective. It happens at such an early stage in life that if just a handful of those youth made any sort of positive 
change that wouldn't have happened any, otherwise, uh, well, the program's offset its own cost in, in perpetuity. And we've seen a lot more than five or a handful of cases. Um, and if I had more time here tonight, uh, I could try to explain or, or give an idea of how it is that a group of people, many of whom are literally too young to vote, could pull this kind of thing off. Uh, I don't have that kind of time, so what I can say for now is that, first off, they started with the idea of a Youth Justice Committee and it's, it, it snowballed. It, it did a lot of things that normal Youth Justice Committees don't do. But I can also say, maybe more importantly, that a lot of the success that YRAP has isn't because of its structure, it isn't because of its innovation or its official sanctioning, it's because uh, it's an environment that fosters creativity and integrity but also some very simple, important human connections. Uh, but since we're here tonight and we're, we're at a university event, we're talking about the future, um, maybe what I'll leave you with is this, that uh, when we're, we're talking about healthy societies, we're talking about outcomes in education, we're talking about um, hiring people or getting hired ourselves, we always want people who are experienced, we want people who are competent, people who have a uh, perspective, um, where do those people come from? Well, YRAP is a place where young people can get real experience and real exposure without having years of, of training or specialization first. And when they do it, they do it before they go into that next stage of life. And their experiences there inform those stages to come. And not only that, but because everyone's young, it's expected that we're gonna make some mistakes, we're gonna learn, we're gonna grow. But that's all done with the support of a community, that community of youth, but also advisors. Uh, ex we have expert advisors, alumni like myself, uh, as well as the community at large, which I have to say, sees so much value in the program that they're giving by far the majority of YRAP's funding through private donations. And I can also say as myself, uh, now five years past being a youth by YRAP standards, uh, no education, nothing prepared me for what was to come in the way that my time with YRAP did. And I, I can also say, I'm, I'm far from the only person to say that, at YRAP, there's been, there's been several people who we've seen go from a, a youth, maybe on the streets, in jail, to becoming part of this community of youth, to uh, going from that to a, a leadership position in that community, and then on to whatever they choose. That's the kind of places it is. That's the kind of the, the relationships and the growth that, that can happen there. And when it comes down to it, YRAP exists because some ordinary youth decided to take on something big without knowing any better. And for the most part, they're doing a bang up job. And it happened because a few ordinary people asked themselves, what kind of community do I want to be a part of? And how can I, as I am now, be a part of it. Thank you.